communities. The least polluted are found up in Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo counties, where there are fewer residents, fewer cars, and less industry. Also in the study are five communities chosen because certain pollutants are high while others are low. About 500 children were recruited from schools in each community, so the total number of kids studied was almost 6,000. In order to gather information about the children, a dedicated team of researchers visits every school in the study. They've been doing this each year since the study began in 1993. Each child fills out a questionnaire about his or her health. This information is used to determine how air pollution affects certain symptoms and conditions such as asthma, bronchitis, wheezing, and cough. Now you want to take that mouthpiece and put it between your teeth. Each child undergoes an annual lung function test. Data from each year's results will show how fast their lungs are growing and how big they are getting. The researchers also monitor how many days of school each child misses each year to help figure out what kind of role air pollution plays in absenteeism. When the kids were enrolled in the study, the majority were in fourth grade, or about 10 years old. We're picking an age range where the children are developing very rapidly. Uh, they're going through puberty, and so they're experiencing a growth spurt, not only in their body in general, but their lungs are, are keeping track with that and growing as well. So the idea is that if air pollution is having an effect on growing tissue, um, that that might be a particularly good time to see its effects, uh, is when, when the lung is developing most rapidly. The closest thing that we can probably compare uh, air pollution to with respect to a child's exposure is environmental tobacco smoke and, or passive smoke or secondhand smoke. This means breathing polluted outdoor air may be like living with a smoker. When the child breathes, the, breathes these pollutants into the lung um, and they get deep into the lung, we think they may be causing inflammation in the lung and repeated inflammation. Uh, over days and months and years may cause some restructuring of the lung to try and handle the, the assault that's happening um, on a daily basis. And the assault from air pollution is one that many parents find hard to avoid. That's because it happens when kids are engaged in normal, everyday activities. Every time exhaust comes out of a car or truck or factory, you can assume that somewhere a child is breathing some of it in. When we're at a public forum and discuss the findings of the children's health study, the room grows silent. You could hear a pin drop. And it's because people are alarmed about the effects that air pollution is having on today's children. The children's health study has found that children who grow up in areas with high pollution levels are at risk for decreased lung function, more frequent respiratory illness, increased school absences, and developing asthma. And kids with asthma have a higher risk of getting bronchitis, causing them to cough and produce phlegm, which makes them sicker. Scientists agree the most disturbing finding of the children's health study to date is that air pollution affects how children's lungs grow and how well they function. When we breathe, our lungs inhale to bring in fresh oxygen and exhale to remove carbon dioxide waste from our bodies. If lungs become damaged by pollutants, lung function is impaired. Think of blowing out candles on a cake. Someone with 100% of their lung function could probably blow out 100 candles in one breath. They can do that because they can completely fill their lungs with air and then blow out all that air with ease. Someone who has difficulty doing this can be said to have reduced lung function. In healthy children, lungs grow as their bodies develop, but the greatest growth rate is during puberty. From ages 10 to 14, healthy children see their lungs grow by about 12 percent each year. By the late teens or early 20s, lungs have essentially stopped growing and then plateau until about age 30. Then lung function begins to decline at a rate of about 1 percent per year. Now take a child exposed to high levels of pollution. The children's health study shows that during the crucial puberty years, their lungs will grow 10 percent less each year. Over a period of four years, that's a significant deficit in lung function compared with kids growing up in low pollution neighborhoods. And the scientists do not yet know how this deficit will affect the rate of future lung growth.
What they do know is this deficit can occur in any child, not just in those with asthma. In fact, the children whose lung function is impacted may seem perfectly healthy. I think it's very hard for a parent to pick up on the kinds of things that we're studying. They're not going to be able to observe their child's lung function in any demonstrable way. Their, their lungs are developing and they're typically out able to play and, and they, they probably won't notice anything wrong even if maybe they are being impacted somewhat by air pollution because they are in this rapid growth phase. But it is well known that reduction in lung function later in life, uh, we're talking age 50, 60, 70, is a key risk factor for uh, respiratory conditions and ultimately death. I spent a lot of time in the emergency room, a lot, a lot, a lot of time in the emergency room. Tony's kids get sick often, and that means keeping them home from school. In a 30-day period, they're missing anywhere from about 5 to 10 days. And they're not the only ones. The Children's Health Study found that more kids stay home from school when the air pollution gets worse. Several days after a significant rise in ozone levels, more kids miss school due to sore throats, coughs, asthma attacks, and other similar problems. What we found was that uh, there was a fairly striking relationship between the level of ozone on the two and three days before uh, to the chance of being absent a couple days after that exposure. A typical September month in the Inland Empire, some 40 to 50 miles east of L.A., looks like this. The shaded days are the ones that exceed the state ozone standards, meaning the air pollution got worse. The study found that several days after these peaks, the number of kids absent from school would double. And most often, when a child is kept home from school, a parent is kept home from work. That means lost wages and lower productivity. According to an analysis done in conjunction with the Children's Health Study, reducing high levels of ozone could save approximately $67 million every year in Southern California alone in costs related to school absences. When I was about 10, I started playing soccer, and I, I just started running, and I started getting really tired, and I couldn't breathe, and then I, I told my mom, and I, we went to my doctor's, and he told me that I had asthma, and I had to use an inhaler. Actually, I, me and my mother thought it was the smog, because when I would go play somewhere else, it wouldn't happen, and then I'd play in smog, and it would happen. So, and I just connected the two. So did the Children's Health Study. We've recently published a paper that is one of the first that shows a potential uh, causative link between air pollution and new asthma, meaning that uh, perhaps a air pollution may cause asthma. And this is different from, from uh, what we have established before and what other people have seen, that air pollution causes increased symptoms in the children that already have asthma. We're talking about air pollution actually bringing on the the definition of asthma in, in a child. Well, we've known for a long time that, that air pollutants aggravate asthma, and I don't think uh, that anybody would dispute that anymore. There must be 40 or 50 scientific papers showing that pollutants adversely affect asthmatics. But causing it is something else, because now you want to know why this child has developed asthma. In the study, the onset of new asthma cases is primarily linked with the pollutant ozone, a gas that forms as a result of vehicle emissions interacting with sunlight. This is the Lake Arrowhead area. It's a popular vacation spot.